Hello, my name is Dan Vlamis, and I'm your host for today's Analytics and Data TechCast, uh, which will be immediately following this brief introduction. Uh, I'm on the board of the ANDOUC uh, user group. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, we're going to have a great speaker today. After we're done, we'll have uh, Patrick Wheeler here uh, talking about uh, introducing autonomous database tools. Go ahead and advance, Patrick, if you would. Uh, to the next slide. And uh, we do have some links that we want to include for you all uh, that'll have great background on how to get your hands on the autonomous database tools, the video on this, reviews, all that type of stuff. And uh, I'll ask Carrie to drop those in the chat line so you all can see all the information that Oracle has on this and uh, do your own uh, research on that. Uh, go ahead and next slide. Uh, this is in a series of tech casts. We've been doing these for coming up on three years here. Uh, so we have a fantastic archive built up of various tech casts. You'll see some of the information from 2020, 2019. Uh, and if you go through that, you'll see a library of these about every two weeks or so, uh, various topics that we give from both product management and from partners and from customers. You'll see a mix of those. And we have the replays out on our website on an, uh, analyticsanddatasummit.org slash techcasts that you can see there. Uh, the upcoming one uh, is gonna be presented by another board member, Charlie Berger. Uh, is Tesla in your future? Let's see, using Oracle Machine Learning. That's on June 17th. So I hope you can register for that and uh, join us uh, for that uh, techcast. Go ahead and uh, the next slide. We have uh, multiple ways to uh, connect to us. We also have merchandise uh, in that. Indeed, I am drinking out of my very own uh, ANDOUC mug. You can see it's heated up with the uh, liquid that I have in here, uh, my tea. You can find more on the ANDOUC store at ANDOUC.org. And you too can have one of these fantastic mugs and luggage tags and notebooks and all sorts of stuff. Uh, from us. Next slide. Uh, we also, as part of a user community, we kind of believe in sharing uh, with each other and with the community. So you'll see we're all over on uh, various uh, channels. So you can uh, join our Slack workspace. Uh, and with that big long URL, we'll drop that in the chat, obviously, as well. Uh, our newsletter that we come out with periodically, uh, it's an automated newsletter, our LinkedIn group, uh, we're on Twitter and also on Facebook. Hopefully you found uh, this webinar via one of those channels or you're on your newsletter list where, uh, where we announce each one of these webcasts. Uh, so join us out there, post your own questions. Uh, we encourage people, especially on the Slack workspace, to post things and share as a community. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also have our every, about once a quarter, we have what we call TechCast Days. Uh, three different days that we devote about three hours each uh, to various topics in analytics and in machine learning and in spatial and graph. Those are the three tracks we kind of tend to do on these TechCast days. We would love to have you uh, join us and submit an abstract. If you click on that submit an abstract link that you'll find on our website at andouc.org, you, you too could be presenting on uh, these tech casts and sharing this with your tours, uh, with your peers. It's great for professional development. Uh, and uh, so save the date for October 5th through 7th. Uh, we'll be doing that for our fall session. Uh, next slide. Uh, with that, uh, I think uh, I'll turn things over to Patrick Wheeler. Patrick is the uh, 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 vice president in charge of uh, data integration tools. And so I'm going to turn things over to Patrick. Go ahead. Thank you, Dan, uh, for that introduction. And thank you uh, to the Analytics and Data Oracle User Group for, for allowing me to participate in this session. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Uh, this is indeed the topic um, of this presentation, Autonomous Database Tools. This is a suite of tools that are built into the Autonomous Database. And uh, we've got some great stuff here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to divide this talk into two, sec into two sections. The first bit, I'm going to dance around all sorts of philosoph philosophical concepts. Um, and the second bit, I'm going to show you what we've built. So there'll be some quite extensive demos at the end. Um, 
But I want to set the scene a little bit first. And a, a good place to start is with our mission statement. This is how Larry Ellison de defines it. Our mission is to help people see data in new ways, discover insights, unlock endless possibilities. Seeing data in new ways, discovering insights, unlocking possibilities. So these themes are central to the philosophy of autonomous database. Um, and first of all, I'm going to start with a word about exadata. It's a bit of a truism, but it bears repeating. Oracle's the best database. Exadata is the best machine to run it on. And uh, in my experience, there are two types of exadata customers. There are those that love their exadatas, and there are those that don't have an exadata yet. Some of our customers, though, have got dozens of them, hundreds of them even. Um, the price performance of X data is fantastic. However, for smaller businesses, the table stakes can seem too high. Perhaps the club is too exclusive. So with that thought in mind, we want to extend these benefits so that everyone can enjoy them from the biggest and the most demanding companies in the world to small and medium businesses too. And this is what Autonomous Database does for us. It's the full power of Oracle Database running on Exadatas in Oracle Cloud, but it can be purchased at the granularity of a single OCPU. So it's very affordable and you don't need to hire an army of IT to get it all running. All of the database administration is obvious. So the point about Autonomous Database is that it makes a DBA's life easy. It removes the drudgery from the job and allows the DBA to focus on higher value tasks. But database administration is not the only role that we need to consider. There are other players in the game. And autonomous database administration alone does not deliver benefits to them. So the autonomous database now includes a built-in tool suite to extend the benefits of autonomous operations to these other players as well. So now I'm going to turn to what you do with your data warehouse. Um, let's consider the first job of one of these personas, the data analyst. And a swimming medley, I think, is a pretty good analogy for the process of data analysis. So you think of a, a, a relay here, the first leg in the relay is to load your data. Then comes data preparation. And next, semantic modeling. Only then do you get to the, to the anchor leg, the analysis of your data. Now, Oracle provides industry-leading tools for each leg um, in this data analysis medley. Oracle Data Integrator, or ODI, it's an enterprise class data integration tool with extract, trans, sorry, extract load transform, we call that ELT architecture. Enterprise data quality is a sophisticated, powerful tool for profiling and cleaning and preparing the data. Analytic views built into the Oracle database provide a common framework for defining universally accessible semantic models. And Oracle Analytic Cloud is the perfect complement, providing beautiful, insightful analysis of this data. And so for our traditional market, this is a comprehensive and compelling suite of tools, enterprise class tools for an enterprise class market. You know, there's a but coming, but <laughs> we must keep in view the fact that the autonomous database now expands the addressable market for Oracle. And if we draw a graph of the size of a company here on the, the Y axis, a number of employees is a pretty good proxy for that against the number of companies of that size, um, there's a very large number, there's a really, relatively few, I should say, small, uh, sorry, let's try that again. There are relatively few big companies with tens or hundreds of thousands of employees. And there's a very large number um, of much smaller companies. These are the SMBs and the small and medium businesses, or perhaps individual departments or lines of business with their own budgets, 
in these large companies. Now, Oracle's traditional market, of course, it's this enterprise space. Our ability to address the most exacting requirements of this very large, uh, these very largest companies in the world is unmatched. But because of its simplicity and its low cost of ownership, Oracle Autonomous Database now dramatically extends the addressable market. It's now very realistic, it's compelling even, for SMBs with small budgets uh, to enjoy the benefits of Oracle Database too. But we recognize that customers in this newly accessible market have a different profile. So whereas our traditional market was perhaps the fortune, name a small number, 5,000, uh, with complex requirements, large budgets to address them with. The budgets of customers in our new market tend to be smaller. Rather than dealing with enterprise IT and large central specialist teams of experts, in our new market, we're dealing with shadow IT and small departmental teams or even individual generalists. So thinking back to the data analysis medley, perhaps in our traditional market, we could think of this as a relay medley. Now it's hard enough to swim a length or two of an Olympic sized pool in any stroke at racing speed, for many of us, perhaps at any speed. This is the advantage of the big companies. They can afford to staff centralized specialist teams of experts in these various fields, specialists in data integration, specialists in data prep, in semantic modeling and business analysis. But in the new, in the new market, we're not talking about a relay medley. It's an individual medley. And there are very few people who can competently swim an individual medley. It really is quite a challenge. So it's unreasonable, I argue, to expect that our traditional suite of tools developed to address the complex requirements of the enterprise market is suitable for this newly accessible market. It's not realistic to expect these, these users to perform an individual medley. So we need to rethink our approach to the requirements of this market. What's needed is an integrated suite of tools tailored for the needs and the skill set of this newly accessible market. So expanding on the analogy, perhaps we could think of this more broadly in terms of needing to cross a body of water without necessarily being very good at swimming. Perhaps pedaling a canoe or paddling a canoe would be a far more realistic proposition. Okay, so next in my little philosophical dance around the topic, um, I wanna to review a little bit of history, the enterprise data warehouse. I believe this was the zenith of the power of corporate IT. There was a promise of many benefits, global insights derived from a global overview of data. There was a very high quality threshold for incoming data, no garbage in, no garbage out. Big teams of data integrators and developers and analysts could naturally collaborate around this central resource. It's classic, strong data management. But they were cumbersome, rigid, expensive, and we all know what happened next. Budgets moved to the departments and the lines of business. And along with the money, so goes the power. So this was the dawn of the self-service market. And there followed a proliferation of niche tools to serve this new fragmented market. You've got data integration tools with their mess data stores and data prep tools with their metadata stores, development tools with their metadata stores, and analytic tools, you guessed it, with their metadata stores. And with this fragmentation of tools comes a fragmentation of data into these technical silos of the various tools 
in the various departments. And now the enterprise data warehouse is relegated to one curated source of data among many others. So this great leap, leap in agility has come at the expense of data quality, consistent semantics, reliable data lineage, performance, reliability, and so much more. Now our opportunity here is to address this fragmentation of tools and consolidate these silos of data without sacrificing the gains in flexibility and agility that came with the self-service generation. So we foresee now a transition from self-service to autonomous analytics. We can address the problems that the self-service market introduced. And this is a key, a key point, data consolidation and continuous learning from user actions are the essential foundation for autonomous analytics. This will enable us to meet our goals, reconsolidate processing and data, re-establish strong data management while retaining the hard-won benefits of agility and flexibility. Okay, so moving on now, it's a cliche, but it's a good one. This is one of my favorites. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. The benefits of integration are multifaceted. And with Autonomous Database, we deliver an integrated platform. It's not just a single tool with the customer left to buy all the other tools they'll need, nor is it a solution delivered in kit form with the customer left to cobble it all together. It's pre-assembled, it's pre-configured, it's pre-deployed. There's a consistent user experience with built-in best practices. It's like having a an expert there in the box to guide you right through. The components are defined in the common database layer so that they can be shared by all users in all the tools. And all this metadata is brought together in, in a common catalog. I'll show you this in a little bit later on. So it's not just the tools that are integrated, it's the data too. A business model spanning data sources that can be federated when appropriate. So not just a model of the data you've got in the relational database, but federated sources in object stores, ours, other clouds, all that sort of stuff. Um, federating this allows us to eliminate silos. Um, defining it in the common data catalog eliminates these silos. And this results in renewed confidence in data lineage and impact analysis. In other words, we've got collaboration by design. So this built-in collaboration between specialists is what eliminates the silos. For example, if you can recognize a hierarchy automatically during data load and data prep and define that in the database itself, these hierarchies are immediately accessible to the data analyst for aggregation purposes because it's common metadata. So additional semantic modeling that the analyst might do, perhaps defining sophisticated calculations, percentage change since last year, think how hard that SQL is to write. Again, define this stuff in the database itself. That makes it accessible, for example, to the data scientist. So this provides a great head start in developing predictive models that in turn can be used by the CRM developer who might want to augment a customer view with the most suitable campaign to discuss during the next meeting. Um, at the beginning, Dan mentioned Charlie Berg, and one of the things Charlie always mentions is that one of the biggest problems with these, with these models that get developed is actually deploying them. Well, here they are pre-deployed and ready to be used. Deployment is not an issue here. They're right there. So Autonomous Database comes with a sophisticated suite of tools pre-installed, but it's not a walled garden. On the contrary, it's an open, platform with open standards. If you want to speak SQL, speak SQL. So do we. We speak Python too, if that's your preference. And whether your data is in a CSV file or JSON or Parquet or whatever it's going to be, it's going to be comfortably at home in Autonomous Database. Using the language of your choice, you analyze your data using whatever tool you're most comfortable with. The whole idea 
is that there should be nothing new to learn. Now, so far, I've been dancing around this topic. Um, we've been talking about the philosophy of autonomous database, and this has guided its evolution. And we know that you've got a plethora of data sources to wrangle, apps and databases and files and more, and a vast array of things you want to do with all that data. And we know that you expect more than just a flashing SQL prompt to do it all with. With the autonomous database tools, we aim to include everything you need and nothing you don't. So there are tools in here for data load and transformation, for business modeling to make sense of all that data, data insights, so you don't need to go looking for a needle in a haystack. There's a catalog too, as I've mentioned, and tools for ML and graph, and of course, SQL developer web, and Apex for low code application development. So now we get to the demo part, and um, you, you ac access this through a page which we call database actions. So um, what, what you'll see now is as you come to autonomous database, you may be familiar with a tools tab that looks, that looks like this, or a few months ago it used to look like this. But the next time you get there and click on tools, you'll get something that looks like this. So this is laid out with a card for each tool in groups such as development and data tools. At the top here, we can access context sensitive documentation by the question mark. It can be viewed in this side panel that could be toggled to left or right or opened in for viewing in a separate window if you prefer. There's quick access to various links below here. And via this menu at the upper right, under the username, you can access preferences, detailed about information or log out of the service if you like. On the top left of every screen, up here, there's this four barred menu, which sometimes we call the hamburger menu. And this provides direct navigation to various individual tools or back to the database action page itself. OK, so brief orientation around um, our tool suite. Now I'm going to get to some of the specifics, uh, some of the specific tools. And that was just to, to show you how to, to get into the suite of tools. But um, we're going to get to some of the specific tools here. And to provide some context while I do this, I'll introduce um, a business case, which might be familiar to you. If you, if you remember back several years to Big Data Light, um, this is a, a concept based on that. We're calling this notional business movie stream, Oracle movie stream, basically the, the definition of our social lives for the last 15 months or so. Um, and within this business, I'll be playing the role of a departmental analyst. And I've just been assigned a new mission by the boss. Look into the data for Q2 of last year to help us plan new campaign. Now to support this analysis, I've been given an extract of consumption data for last year. So bear this in mind, I'll be walking through this for the next few minutes while I, I do a demo. So what's the first step? It's data load, of course. Now, everyone that's tried to load data, you know that it's more easily said than done, at least until now. Now with our tools, you just say what you want to do, you load data into your autonomous database, or perhaps you link to it in a remote location, or maybe you even set up a live feed. So what do you want to do? And then you say where your data is. It could be in a local file, it could be a remote database, or an object store in some cloud somewhere, and, and you press go. That's that's pretty much it. So let's just um, let's just wander through a demo of of data load now. So the first step for our movie stream analyst now is is to load this data. So I load or access data from local files, and here we are. What do I want to do with the data? Load it into the autonomous database leave it in place or access it remotely or set up a live feed. Now, where is it? The file on the local machine in another database or stored in the cloud somewhere. And we set up access to these cloud locations here. So this card over here allows me to inspect the data in my ADB. So let's start by loading some data from my local machine. We simply drag and drop the files here. 
And here are the three files that we want to load. Three files that give us four cards. So there's a card for file countries, another for file devices. And here we see two cards for the file days, months. One will load a table called months and the other will load a table called days. You see, days, months is an Excel file with two tabs. One's for days, one's for months. And each tab loads a separate table. Let's look at the properties for this countries card. It's a CSV file. And we have a nice default value for the target table name. So we've got various options here. Create a new table, insert it into existing table, replace the data in the table, recreate the table, or merge the data into the table. Now, in this case, I just want to create a new table. Okay, over here, the column mappings seem reasonable. And here we can see a preview of the data we're about to load. I'll bump this up to 100 rows. It's a nice, simple table uh, of countries within continents. Okay. So with a simple gesture, we've set up this single load of data from three files, different types into four target tables, nice and easy. So we run this job. Um, and we can now click on the target table we've just created and see a simple hierarchy of the specific devices in this case um, that uh, we've loaded. And here we see um, the devices and the categories of those uh, devices. Okay, next we're going to load a bigger file, this time from cloud storage. First, we need to set up access to this cloud storage location. We don't have any of these yet, so we have to add a new one. So I'm going to call this one movie sales. Now we specify the URI for the cloud storage location. So I paste that in there. Uh, this one's a public bucket with no credential required. And we see this nice card here for the cloud storage location. So now we're ready to load data from there. So we say load data from cloud storage. And here we see within this cloud storage location, the files that are present there. This is the one we want, movie sales 2020. So I drag this over here to load it. Look at its properties. And as before, we have a good default table name based on the file name. Again, it's a CSV file. And again, it's the initial load. So create table is the right choice here. These um, column names look good. I just want to go there and click that. Let's run this job. Now this, this one's a bigger file. It's got about half a million rows in it. So you get a sense of progress as the job executes. OK, so that took about 15 seconds. Not bad. Let's take a look. So we're going to pop out to the data load main page. And I'm going to click this Explore card to inspect the data that we've just loaded. So here are the four tables we loaded from the three local files. And here are a couple of instrumentation tables that are created in case we need to view the details of the data load. And here we're looking at the table in the, the, the so-called fact table we just created. So we see data across various dimensions here, geography and time, movie genre, customer segment, viewing device. And here are the measures, so sales and dollars and cents, and individual purchase events. All right. OK, I want to show you the statistics which I find are very helpful for quickly understanding the structure and the content of the table. For example, we click on day and we see that there are four, 14 distinct values. That doesn't sound right. So rolling my mouse across the histogram below, we can see the problem. Some values are in uppercase and others are in title case. You see that? So there's a data quality problem here that needs to be fixed. So we'll take a note of that. Now here for months, there are 12, which is okay. On a calendar, 
But our specific task here involves analyzing the data just for Q2, April, May, and June. So I need to filter out the data for the other nine months. So let's make a mental note. We need to correct the values for the days of the week, and we need to filter out the months outside of Q2. Okay, so now let's return to the uh, database actions main page. All right, so that was the, the data load demo. What have we seen here? And just a few short minutes here, we've loaded data, both from files of various types and multiple locations. Um, we've quickly scanned that data and identified some problems that need to be addressed. And we're gonna do that next. And the point here is that sometimes your data is just right, but sometimes you need to clean it up and sometimes you need to clean it up quite a bit. And that's where our data transforms tool comes in. It's got all the power of Oracle Data Integrator because it's built on top of it, uh, but it's got a nice clean and modern web UI, simple enough even for me to use. Uh, it's just what you want. So you drag and drop and say what you want to do. Don't worry about how to do it. The tool does all that hard work for you. So you'll recall that we identified two problems with that movie sales data just loaded, right? There was the need to correct the values for the day of the week and the need to filter out the months outside Q2. So let's go straight to the data transforms tool to correct those now. So we already have a project here called movie stream. I set this up for demo purposes within which we'll create a new data flow to fix the data as required for our analysis of Q2 FY 2020. So I drag the table, movie sales 2020 onto the canvas. And the first thing is to filter out the months outside Q2. So I drag the filter tool from the palette and connect this to the table. Now we'll call this filter Q2 only. and specify its properties. So I drag the column month onto the expression editor and say that I'm only interested in the months of April, May, and June. Next, we're going to fix the values for column day. So for this, I'm gonna use the data cleanse tool, which I connect up as before. Okay, so for column day, there we go. We just want to strip off the leading and trailing uh, spaces and we want to convert it to title case. Okay. Call that fix all cap days. Great. Now we're going to create a new table for the results of these operations. So let's call this movie sales 2020 Q2. All right, I want to get rid of the columns I don't want. Uh huh. Okay, press save here. Now, let's take, um, I want to take a look at the properties of this new table. So we need to ensure that the new table will be created rather than loading incrementally. Um, okay, let's save this job. and run it. Okay, and here we see confirmation that the data transform operation has begun. And this concludes the data prep section of this demo. So here we've used the data transforms tool to fix some data quality problems that we identified during data load. To do this, we created a data flow which filtered out the unwanted months and standardized the case of column day. We created a new table called Movie Sales 2020 Q2 with the resulting data set. And now we move on to the next leg in our data analysis medley. 
The point here is that data analysts don't typically work directly against base tables in a database. It's rare for the semantics of the data model to be apparent from the physical data structure itself. Instead, data analysts tend to work against a semantic model. This is a layer above the physical data structure that defines its business significance. But not all business models were created equal. Now, most popular self-service analytic tools define the business model in the tool itself. And a common problem with this is that different analysts, each with their own self-service tool, can easily define different and contradictory business models, even on the very same data set. Now, our approach at Oracle is to push the business model down to the lowest layer, the database layer. And there, it only needs to be defined once, which in itself is a great productivity boost. You don't need to reinvent that wheel, of course. But more importantly, it promotes consistency. By sharing this common business model, all the analysts get a consistent view of the business. Now, a further advantage of defining the business model in the database is performance. Now, this is a subtle point, but it's an important one. Now, a key insight is that business analyses tend to access data at the top level. So let's think about that movie stream example. So rather than an individual customer's purchase of a particular movie last Tuesday evening, the data analyst is much more interested in things like consumption of an entire movie genre by an entire demographic segment of customers in North America last April aggregated to the top level. So by automatically recognizing the hierarchy, defining it in the database, the autonomous database can automatically compute and store these top level aggregates. And we call this materialization of aggregate caches. Now, because we know about the hierarchy um, and we know about the existence of the aggregate caches, the autonomous database can transparently rewrite queries to access pre-computed aggregates rather than having to compute them on the fly. So the result is exceptional performance, even with huge data sets, even federated data sources. It all happens transparently behind the scenes. All the user does is to browse and access the data just as if it's all stored locally in the autonomous database, just as if it's all at the lowest grain. It's, it's, it's really very impressive. Now here's a business, here's a screenshot of this business model tool in Autonomous Database. We made it simple to build sophisticated models on your data by identifying dimensions, hierarchies, and measures with a nice clean way of saying how to aggregate sum or average or whatever it's gonna be. So I'll demonstrate how to build this very quickly on the fact table we created in the previous step. So we say that we want to Let's get the business model thing here. We say that we want to create a model um, for the table movie sales 2020 Q2. Okay. Now the tool is now inspecting the schema, trying to identify potential dimension tables that could join to the fact table and identify any hierarchies and measures in this data set. So it's come up with a potential star schema design that looks quite promising. So now you see why the analyst wanted to save those data files for reuse in this quarter's analysis. So if we expand on each of these candidate dimensions, for each we see its columns, and for demo purposes, these are obviously very simple tables. Hovering over the relationships, we see the candidate join conditions. These all look good. Okay, now let's look at the candidate hierarchies. And the first one comes from table countries. Now this hierarchy will be better labeled as geography. So let's override that default name. Now the tool has correctly identified the hierarchy of country within continents. So that looks good. Notice the tool has detected a hierarchy for, from devices to form factor. And we looked at that data as it came in earlier on. We'll see how to use that in just a minute. Now let's look at this one with a rather odd name, Daynum USA. 
I want this to be a day dimension. So again, I'll override this default name. And I'll remove the Daynam USA level by selecting it, pressing the minus button. What I want to do here is to sort the days by the day number of week, the US standard, starting on Sunday rather than alphabetically. And similarly for the month hierarchy, let's override these default names. What I want to do is order by the month as it appears in the calendar. Okay, next we'll move on to measures. And immediately we see that two good candidates have been identified here, sales and purchases. Now for each, we can specify the aggregation expression to use, the sum average. In this case, I think the default of sum is appropriate, probably for both measures. Okay, let's create this business model. And here on the card, for the newly created business model, we click on these three vertical dots for more details. I'd like to show you the DDL. Scroll through all this. Think how glad I am. I didn't have to type all that stuff in. Thank you very much. Um, but maybe it's more interesting to do a quick and dirty analysis of this business model. So here we can build a simple pivot table, for example, viewing across a customer's segments, the various form factors being used to watch movies. Okay, so under the measures um, tab, I wanna select purchases rather than sales. I see the data here, let me just stretch this out. Notice that it's been aggregated from specific devices to form factors here, the, the devices table, remember the devices table we brought in? So briefly, um, we've got some additional navigation options here to take us directly to the catalog or the insights tool, we'll see those, those later. Um, we also have these options from the hamburger menu as I showed you before. But in this case, we'll just return to the, uh, to the database actions page. So again, um, if we review what we've seen in this demo, a lot of value has been added in a brief period. The business model tool guided us through the automated creation of a business model on top of the data that we loaded and cleansed just a few moments ago. It automatically detected a star schema with a fact table and four dimensions. You didn't see me defining any constraints or anything like that. It's automatic detention, detection of these relationships. Two of those dimensions, geography and devices, have hierarchies in them. Again, automatically detected. And these enable the aggregation of data from country to continent and device to form factor, respectively, as we've just seen. The business model is implemented as an analytic view, but I didn't have to write any of that SQL to build it. And we could even view the data through a quick and dirty pivot table. Okay, so next comes a feature I wanted to call the electromagnet. They didn't let me call it that. Um, but here's the thinking. An analyst job can often feel like looking for a needle in a haystack. So you throw the switch on the electromagnet and all the, elect all the metallic stuff goes slamming up onto the electromagnet. And sure, there are going to be rusty old nails and screws and nuts and bolts, but there are going to be a few needles as well. And it's far easier to pick the needles out of these few bits of metal than to go rummaging around in a pile of hay, especially if you have allergies. Um, and that's more or less how this insights tool work. You, you load your data, you kick off a query, and you grab a cup of coffee. It takes a few minutes to run this thing. Autonomous database is doing all the hard work, scouring through the data, looking for hidden patterns, anomalies, and outliers. And essentially, we run some analytic queries that predict the expected values. And where the actual values differ significantly from expectation, the tool presents them here. Now, some of those might be uninteresting or obvious, maybe. The tool doesn't know that. But some are worthy of further investigation. So you get this dashboard. I think of it as a dashboard with gauges on it, um, with various exceptional data platform, uh, data patterns. So you drill down on a specific gauge in the dashboard, and significant deviations between actual and expected values are highlighted. 
but let's see it in action. Here goes. So now uh, we'll take a look at the data insights tool. And we start by saying that we want insights within our schema, Q team in this case, against the business model we just created and for measured purchases. And we press search. Now by scanning through the data and running a large number of queries, a number of candidate insights has been produced. And after some time, we see these bar charts. Each chart is for an individual insight. For example, there's one here for the taste of middle-aged females in various genre of movie. Okay. Now scrolling down, here's one that may be interesting. Movie genres consumed in June. And drilling down on this, we see for the month of June, actual purchases are shown by the blue bars and expected purchases are shown by the green lines. And you'll see that three bars have black borders. For these, there were large differences between expected and actual values. And this is actually quite interesting. It's not at all obvious. The data suggests that as we move into the summer month, here we are in June, as opposed to April and May, the taste for movies shifts from sci-fi escapism um, to light-hearted comedy and romance. This is actually quite an actionable insight. In planning next year's campaign, we could anticipate this shift in sentiment with the changing seasons. So data insights, it's a remarkable tool. Autonomous database uses its knowledge of the business model based on an analytic view to automate the slice and dice process that an analyst usually performs manually. So the tool identifies the anomalies, the deviations from expected values using ML algorithms um, and catalogs them for the business user or some analytics tool to dig into. It's a great feature for new users of autonomous database. Imagine creating a new data mart and then getting interesting results right away autonomously. Okay, last theme here, data is capital. And the built-in catalog allows you to maximize its value. Data lineage and impact analysis are now at your fingertips in this integrated tool. So I find it far more helpful to demonstrate this tool in action than to attempt a long-winded explanation. So let's go to the catalog tool. It's got a wealth of information about the data we've been working with. And at first we see all the tables in the schema in a card view. Now there's also a grid view here, um, which is a little bit more compact. Here it is. And there's a, there's a list view too, but for the purposes of this demo, I want to use the card view. Now there's a browser-like query capability. So for example, if I type movie sales, only the matching items are shown. And currently we're viewing entities of type table in our star schema, but we can change the filter criteria here. For example, I might want to see entities of type business model an analytic view as well. And now beside the two table, we see these two additional cards. Okay, now by clearing the search criteria, we now see eight objects. And for one of these objects, let's pick on devices, we can inspect various details. So here's the uh, data definition of this table, whatever. More interesting to me is the lineage of this table. So expanding on each of these boxes, we see the table and its columns, the data load job, by which it came to be, and over here on the right, the source file we started with. Now by hovering my mouse over these things, we can see the details of each link in the chain. Now we'd also like to show you impact analysis. And you might think of this in terms of lineage turned on its head. For example, let's view the impact analysis for table movie sales 2020 Q2 that we just created with data transforms. And here we see three that the tree of entities 
that are dependent on this table. There's a mapping for each column in that table to the corresponding analytic view and attribute dimension. And each of these can be expanded too. Um, and here's the insight request. With each of the individual insights shown here, so there's a great deal of detail if you need it, and you can collapse it again to get back to a higher level view. Well, that's hard to see. So that's a quick tour of this catalog tool, which has a wealth of information about our data set. Okay, so to summarize, there's a catalog you use this catalog to view objects in the autonomous database. There's a browser-like search capability, and we can use the filter to show entities of particular types. For individual entities, you can see valuable information such as lineage or impact analysis at various levels of detail. Okay, so wrapping this whole thing up now to, um, can you imagine buying a car without Bluetooth or airbags or electric windows or cup holders? Point is, these, these are among the basic requirements in a modern generation of cars. But when I was a boy, cars didn't even have seat belts. Now with autonomous database, we are usher, usher in a new generation of database cloud services. And with this new generation, just as with previous generations of the database, we raise the threshold for minimal required functionality. Now autonomous operations by themselves represent a generational breakthrough. But we believe that more is required. And for this new generation of database cloud service, the autonomous generation, all users of the service require embedded functionality. It should all be built in with nothing more to buy and nothing more to install. It's the next generation database cloud service from the industry's leader for data management. And that brings us to the end of our little talk. And Dan, I've used a lot of time here. I'm gonna stop sharing for now, um, but I'm sure um, we well. Yeah, we do have a couple questions. Thanks, Patrick, for taking us through that. Uh, it was helpful to see how that's matured uh, since we last talked, uh, I guess, back in De early December uh, with the tools. Um, you know, anybody that has questions, you can put in the Q&A and I'll um, uh, mention a couple that have popped up during the um, presentation. One, I'm sure this is somebody that uh, said, hey, you see the old tools in their ADW instance. Uh, do you know what might cause that? Um, well, if uh, you, you should be seeing the new set of tools. So um, the, yeah. the, way I, the way I brought you in um, from the beginning, if you come in from the ADW console, um, under tools, you should see a button that takes you to database actions. Um, and that should take you straight to that tool suite. If it doesn't, um, then please get in touch with me and I'll get that, uh, I'll okay. get that straightened up for you. But that's, okay. um, yeah, you should be seeing the new set of tools. Okay. Yeah, I think they are supposed to be automatically updated to the latest yes. uh, with the cloud offerings. So I don't understand that. Um, also, another person, this is kind of interesting comment. Looks like your data modeling is ignoring all of the industry work on knowledge graph ontologies. Uh, any comment on that? Oh, that's a, that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, in, in this in this session, I, I just focused on a on a subset of tools, but um, we've got some great tools. Um, integration with with um, Oracle Graphing and and, and Oracle mm -hmm. Spatial, and um, I don't know if you have a session planned for that, Dan. Uh, that would be a good thing to to put on the roster for. The analytics and data summit well i know that we have uh sessions on specifically on graph um uh, on this uh even if you go back through the archives uh, we have those on a and d o u c on especially property graphs that are out there um and there may be stuff on uh, rdf graphs as well yes yeah so, so the, this is an integrated suite of tools and and, and these yeah. are well included as well and that, yeah. thank you for that question um same same for the catalog tool yes Okay. Uh, and then there's another question. Uh, there was a reference to fusion apps as ODI source and targets. Where can we see more detail about that? Okay, fusion great question. Yeah, apps. great question. Fusion apps, obviously, a very prominent source of, um, of, of, of information for, um, for, for the autonomous database. Now, um, the data transforms tool that I showed you is, is built on ODI. Um, I think of it as, you know, we've got this fantastic racing machine. Why would you throw that away and start from scratch? 
what we wanted to do was to make it easier to drive. So you've got the same engine, transmission, chassis, all that stuff. We've just made it really easy to drive. But taking this approach inherits all of the wealth that we had with ODI. So for example, we use the BICC connectors to, to get access to Fusion apps and various other applications. So all of those data sources that you get to from ODI come, come along with the deal. Um, so specifically BICC is the way we get to um, the Fusion apps data sources. Um, and all of these things, uh, all of these things are included. Now we shared some links, Patrick, um, on that. Are there anything that specifically in those links to, for instance, the video or the uh, getting started, the step-by-step -step workshop? Does any of that address the uh, Fusion apps as a uh, as a source of target? No, that's a great question. Um, so on there, um, one of the links there is to a, a Oracle Live Labs. Which uh -huh. is called introducing introduction to autonomous database tools, and actually it walks through an example very similar to what um, what I've just shown today. Now um, we are about to publish within I, I hope the next couple of weeks, um, maybe I should say the next month or so, um, another live lab, uh, which is oh, okay. based on the ODI Web Edition, um, and. I believe we're doing an import of data from from Fusion Apps in there, okay. but if not, um, I'll have to check with the guy that's writing this. If if that's not included, then um, we'll do another one for that. Um, but it's also, um, you know, we we could we could have some specific follow up if you like. Um, for, well, that for, may be also an opportunity to uh, you know exercise a little bit of the um, the forum that we have in the Slack workspace. Uh, that we have available for everybody. Uh, you'll, you scroll back in your chat log, you'll see, and you can uh, put any of these questions up in the chat uh, interface and uh, in Slack, and that's where we can get back to you. Uh, with that, that's, uh, um, let's see, um, uh, I think we're running out of time at this point uh, for people with stuff at the top of the hour. Patrick, I'd like to thank you for uh, sharing with us. Uh, the uh, information on the autonomous database tools. If people want to try this out for themselves, last question, how can they try this out for themselves, Patrick? Well, uh, you can try it out for free. Um, we've got um, autonomous database has an always free version. Um, okay. And with this all, always free version, you should um, you should be able to use this this very lab that I've just walked through. So again, look for Oracle Live Labs using the link that was shared at the beginning of the session in the um, in the chat. Um, the Live Lab session is called Introduction to Autonomous Database Tools, and um, you should be able to run through this very example. Then, then of course, I'd encourage you to go and play with your own data sets and try it out. But you can't beat free. That's pretty good. If you need more scale. Um, then um, you can use, um, we've got free credits that give you access to hours and hours of, um, of, of free trial for something with, you know, quite a lot of horsepower. Okay. Um, so by all means, try that. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, join us next time in another two weeks for Charlie Berger's um, session, and uh, we'll see you again, everybody. Thank you.